Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to feature a Winnebago Revel. Now, the Winnebago Revel is what inspired me to build the Airstream B190 and get the four-wheel drive upgrade and add some items. Chris here today is nice enough to spend some time with us and give us a tour of his brand new Winnebago Revel. Hello, Chris. Welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hey, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, this is my 2021 Winnebago Revel. It's on a 2020 Mercedes-Benz VS30 chassis. I got it at the end of August. I ordered it back in May. I'll give you a little tour. We could start out here. Just start right here. We got a table here, flip out table. We'll put my induction cooktop on here and plug it in. There's an outlet right inside that I'll plug in the induction cooktop. This actually is a little bit adjustable. You can push this in, slide it up and down, get whatever height you want. Or... That just snaps in. Have your freshwater tank drains here. Main ones, main freshwater tanks here, those are for draining your hose lines, going to your faucet. You got running boards here. We have a, uh, a whole screen system here. Uh, this unclips and comes down. And then once it's zipped down, you have a little magnetic strip here that keeps it closed so you don't get bugs in here. It has an awning, power awning. And there is an app to operate that, that you can have on your phone if you want, or you, uh... Oh, wow. And it also has a wind sensor on it. There's a wind sensor on it. If uh, it gets a little too windy, it should retract. So I'll hop in here and uh, give you a tour inside. This is a Novacool uh, refrigerator. It's a 12 volt refrigerator, compressor refrigerator. Um, it's three cubic feet and it's actually pretty big. It's pretty deep. Goes in from the back to the front is 16 inches. Um, it's got a little freezer as well. Works really well, way better than the adsorption refrigerators on a standard RV that runs off propane. Um, these are all the switches for the awning light and the awning. This is for the LED lights on the running board. And this is for the porch light. Okay, now we'll move to the front. Talk a little bit about what you get with the Revel in terms of what Mercedes-Benz uh, offerings you get. You get the MBUX Upgraded Entertainment Center. You get front and rear uh, collision avoidance. Uh, you have a backup camera, which I can show you when we head to the back. You have uh, active cruise control. You also have blind spot detection. We have some uh, storage up here. We've got plenty of cup holders here. There's cup holders up here in the dash, although I've never found anything that will actually fit in them. We have um, hookups for your phone there for charging station. It's actually a wireless charging station here as well and you plug in there if you want to connect to Apple or Android CarPlay. A little bit of storage here. Okay, uh, front chair swivel. So this one swivels. This one sit, swivels over this way. So my wife and dog hang out over there. I sit here, nice little table here, pedestal table. This actually will come off if you wanted to. We have storage under here. Just keep some uh, emergency supplies under there, first aid kit, some LED road flares. You have all your fuse panels here. You've got your 120 volt fuse panel and you have your 12 volt fuse panel right here. The windows, these, this window pops open like this, slides out and then you actually slide this down you have a screen and you slide it up the other way, you have a shade. Some USB outlets up here. You have a RAM track for mounting things like fans or whatever else, iPads, whatever else you might want. This seat folds up and you have storage under here. And you also have some storage back here. 
a three point harness seat belt here and then a lap belt here as well for two people to sit here. All right, shut the window, just push it up a little bit and it comes back down and it closes. Just those two little clips. Have cabinet up here. These, in the 2021s, these cabinets are now made out of um, aluminum, I believe. Um, very sturdy and keep my clothes and everything up here. There's an access port up here. Um, if you have something else you want to install on the roof and you want it like a wee boost or something like that, you got an access port right here to the roof. You got another outlet, some USB ports up there. You've got some more storage up here. Quite a bit of storage back here. It's, it's pretty deep. So behind me is a switch for that light right there. And it actually dims, it could be high or low. And they have interior lights here. This is the main interior light, bathroom light. And then you have your one place control panel, which controls all the systems within the van. You have your, your they call your loft bed, which here's where you raise and lower the bed. This is the heating system. It's a hydronic heating system by a company uh, called Elwell. It's, the system itself is called Timberline. And it's got uh, your hot water and uh, it's also for your furnace. And it runs off electric or diesel fuel. Electric burner produces about 5,000 BTUs and the diesel burner is about 15,000 BTUs. So if you want hot water, you need to use the diesel burner. But if you're just looking to heat the coach with hot air, you could run it off of electric probably for a little while. Here's where you would turn your Xantrac batteries on. Um, the system in the van is, uh, has two 125 amp lithium ion batteries, total 250 uh, amps. It has 200 watts of solar on the roof. And it's got a 2000 watt inverter. Um, here's the solar controller here, the ZAMP solar controller, and then here's where you turn the inverter on. Here's uh, they call the well, one place panel. Uh, you got you turn your water pump on here. You check your fresh water tank levels and your gray water tank levels. And it has this has a 21 gallon fresh water tank and a 21 gallon gray water tank. And you also can test your battery levels here as well. And then this is where you would, you want to totally disconnect your solar. You flip this switch and your solar is disconnected. So here's the kitchen. There's a drawer here where you store the induction cooktop. I talked about it a little earlier. Take this out, you plug it in there, and I throw it out on the flip down table out there. And it works really well. And we've got other drawers here. Pretty big drawer here, keep coffee pot or tea kettle, and we will keep our garbage in there as well. I put down a indoor outdoor carpeting from Home Depot. I was finding that the floor installed by Winnebago was scratching up pretty easily, so I just wanted to kind of cover up that and protect it a little bit. Um, here's where we keep all of our plates and everything. Uh, the sink. Right here, I feel like the sink's a perfect size. We have a little hockey puck light right here. Test that on and off. We got another uh, RAM track mount system here. Have a little shelf here, and a pretty big pantry. Fit probably a week's worth of food in there. I'm actually ordering another shelf. Getting another shelf to install in here. Talk about the bathroom. So in the bathroom, let me put the light on. It comes with bamboo shelves that go in here as a storage closet. I took them out because I really don't use them that often. I find that I was mostly using it as a, as a bathroom. Um, it has a cassette toilet um, it's in, in blue of a black water tank. Um, so on the other side, you just got a five gallon cassette toilet. You can just pull that out and you could dump it in pretty much anywhere. A regular toilet, a pit toilet, um, a dump station. It's got a little fan up there for exhaust. I bought that little bamboo mat just to try to keep things a little nicer in here. It's got a little storage closet for shampoo and things like that. Toilet paper holder. 
this toilet swivels and it's got the shower head right there that's an upgraded Camco shower head there's also a curtain that just basically keeps the water off the door and tries to keep it contained in the shower area there's a max fan here which opens up and basically um, sucks air out of the van keeps things pretty cool in here in the summer and here's the garage area it's actually pretty big it's about 47 inches wide and about 55 to 56 inches long you want to lower the bed you put your key in there turn it and then lower it down All right, I'll talk a little bit about the air conditioner. It's a Coleman Mach 10, I believe, and it works pretty well. Um, it runs, I can run exclusively off the batteries. I actually never plugged the van in anywhere yet for power. I've either charged it off the alternator. Um, actually, that's really it. Um, and the solar's just kind of kept things topped off while it's in, you know, in the driveway. Um, the air conditioner, going back to that, is actually pretty quiet, um, much quieter than any previous um, air conditioners I've had in travel trailers. The bed is 48 inches wide and 76 inches long. Uh, I fit in here pretty comfortably. We have some more USB ports over here. We have a uh, 120 volt outlet here. We have lights here. This is for above the bed. This one's for below the bed. We have another little window here. Opens up. Again, shade, screen, got some more hockey puck lights here. So underneath the mattress, it's all slat system so it can air out. I didn't find the mattress very comfortable on my first trip so I ordered a purple mattress and I'm having that custom cut to fit in here. We've got a couple more Ram track mounts here. There's one there, there's one over here. There's also a screen back here. It's actually uh, acts as a privacy screen as well. So if you fold this down, you have privacy. And then if you want to leave the back open and get air, you just unzipper this. And then you now have an open screen area. Now we'll go outside. I can show you the garage area from the back. Another window here, just like the other ones. It's got a screen and a privacy shade. It's got um, flares are bumped out a little bit, so you get a little bit more space in the bed area. It's got a ladder that you um, will mount on the driver's side of the van to get up on the roof if you need to clean off your solar panels or reseal any of the vent holes. Do not climb on the ladder. The owner's manual says don't climb on the ladder on the back of the van. And you just, there's a little lock on here. Get off. That just spins off. Do. Show you the back of the garage area. So the batteries are located inside here under this panel here. Here's a shut off for the batteries. Another uh, switch for the underside light. Some more USB ports, solar port here. If you want to add an exterior solar panel, it's a little cubby hole here. It's a cargo net and a little, uh, a little bag underneath there for storage. You have your freshwater tank system here. Your freshwater tank is actually located inside the van. It's behind that panel there. It's a pretty intuitive system. 
you can um, it's got different settings for dry camping or if you want to fill it from city water you want to winterize it sanitize it it's pretty intuitive you just turn these knobs uh, based on the coating up there and here's where you would hook up for city water there's no city water hookup on the exterior of the van you can turn your water pump on here or up at the one place panel this switch right here is for side porch light you have an outdoor shower there's a little hose in here this is basically all my stuff that I need for the van for water hose um, power power cord um, all kinds of other stuff and you just take this hose you've probably seen this before in other vans pop that in there and now you have an outdoor shower we got a couple storage pockets here we've got some D-rings here there's four D-rings to tie things down we have the waste hose here. There's only a gray tank, which is basically your shower water and your sink water um, is the only uh, tank below the, the van that you would uh, need to empty using this hose. There's no black tank. Uh, there's a cassette toilet and I can talk about that when we get to the other side of the van. It's got your hitch, 5,000 pound towing capacity. It's got a full size spare underneath the van. It's got the rear sensors. Here's where you would hook up your 30 amp power cord if you want to hook up the shore power. It's got another flare here. Here is, I mentioned, the cassette toilet. So in lieu of a black tank, it's got a cassette toilet. Five gallons, take this out and all your stuff is in there and then you could take this pretty much anywhere and dump it uh, you can dump it in a regular toilet uh, dump station um, pit toilet pretty much anywhere slides in there you have your gray waste comes out of here you hook up the hose that we were talking about a little earlier and then you pull this valve right here and then all your gray water will dump out. Underneath here is where the gray tank's located. It's actually heated uh, through the hydronic heating system. And here's the exhaust for the heating system. Here's where you would fuel your vehicle up. It's got a 24 and a half gallon tank. has front sensors, LED headlights, fog lights, it's got a step on the bumper to clean your windshield. Some of the upgrades I'm working on, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm having a custom mattress made. I am doing an agile off-road suspension upgrade. Um, that will be coming later this winter, I'm just waiting on parts. I'm also doing a stereo upgrade. Um, what a lot of people have done in these is you disconnect the center channel speaker and it helps improve the sound of the audio um, But I'm looking to get something a little bit better. So I'm working on that now What was your background in the RV lifestyle prior to buying a Revel? Sure, I have owned escape travel trailers, which are fiberglass travel trailers I started out with a 16 footer and then I moved up to a 19 footer and um, We really enjoy traveling with an RV as my wife and a dog and we've traveled the country four times we've gone from here up to British Columbia and back um, and we just I've always wanted a van but they were kind of cost prohibitive so I eventually figured out how to get one and uh, so I decided I sold the travel trailer last fall and pulled the trigger on this back in I ordered this back in May and what sort of research did you do online prior to buying one there's no there's some groups and yep. forums and uh, pages so initially I was um, thinking about building my own van and then I was considering getting a custom built van um, these have been on my radar since I saw them come out um, I guess late 2017 and um, so after I basically just dug around the internet I used Facebook groups I used uh, internet forums um, just basically anywhere I could find tons of YouTube videos um, 
And uh, so after all that, I decided, you know, the Rebel was the best choice for my fit. And uh, so we, we went with it. Back in May, when I was looking to purchase the Rebel, one thing I was looking for was a dedicated Rebel forum. And I found a bunch of other forums that um, had Rebel information on there, but there wasn't a dedicated Rebel forum similar to what I'd use for the Escape Travel Trailers. So I decided, um, after I purchased this, I decided I'd just go ahead and create a forum for the Rebels. It's uh, the Winnebago Rebel Forum. If anyone's interested, go check it out. Um, it's a little side project I'm having fun with and uh, we'll see where it goes. Now a lot of my viewers might ask the question, why would you go from a travel trailer to a camper van? What was your reasoning for this? So we originally got the trailers but it was because they were much more affordable and we weren't really sure if we'd like the RV lifestyle. So we bought a small travel trailer and um, we just started hitting the road and we really enjoyed it. But some things we found that were a little complicated is if you wanted to run into um, any type of state park or national park, you're pulling a trailer, it gets a little difficult and cumbersome to just pull over the side of the road and park. Or if you want to go in, you know, you're on the road, you're going from point A to point B, you want to check out a small little town, sometimes it can be a little cumbersome with a trailer. So uh, Last year we decided, you know, the van would <clears throat> suit our lifestyle a little bit better and the way we like to travel. And the van is basically the same size as our travel trailer inside, so we didn't really lose much space. And it's just much more functional and flexible for our needs, and it works out pretty well for us. Well, that's a good point because, you know, when I had, and I still have a travel trailer, but when I had my travel trailer, I would have to make a commitment and book a campground because going around town towing a travel trailer, especially if you want to go downtown to some breweries right. or see a show or something, there's really nowhere to park. You got to find a big parking lot. Yep. You can take up two spots. So I found if you just want to go on a whim, even out for a day outing or a weekend getaway, yeah, we've been doing a lot lately. Beach. Yeah. It's easier just to hop right into the van and go. Yep. I already have my van already packed and ready to go for any type of adventure. Uh, but there is some disadvantages. What you would find is. I went to Kenny Bunkport, Maine recently, mm -hmm. and I had everything set up at the campground. I wanted to go downtown. Right. Uh, it was about seven miles all hilly to, to bike. Not so bad, but coming back at night, it was a little sketchy. And you might get in a situation where like the trailer is easier. You just drop it off the campground, you have it all set up, and you could go out in your tow vehicle for the day. So there's pros and cons to both, right. but thank you very much for taking the time today to give our viewers a tour of a Winnebago Rebel. I've been waiting a long time to feature a Winnebago Rebel on my channel. I see them every single day and uh, it's nice to get a full tour on it. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Patrick.